So if you're chasing maximum horsepower, the boosted by Aeroflow big boys are the turbos for you. Hey everyone, Pat from Aeroflow Performance. Uh, we're in the studio today to talk to you about some of the largest turbochargers that we've got in our range. It's the boosted 94102 all the way through to the boosted 106102. So if you come in and have a look at these mammoth turbos, these are really at the top end of the horsepower range uh, and also designed for larger capacity engines or perhaps drag racing specific applications. This is not what you want for a snappy little responsive, you know, hill climb car or a circuit car or something like that. This is when you're all about making maximum horsepower uh, and achieving, you know, the highest mile per hour you can and the lowest ETs you can out at the drag strip. So if we have a look from the front of the turbos, we've got four different options here. So we have the 94 102 with the 94 millimeter compressor, the 98 102, the 102 102, and the biggest of the big boys, 106, 102. So all of the compressor wheels are a 7075 billet alloy compressor wheel in construction. They all have a seven plus seven blade design on the compressor, which is very efficient for the amount of airflow that you're gonna to require to make what these are capable of, which is all the way up to 2,500 horsepower. That's 2,500 horsepower with one turbocharger. Obviously, there's a lot of supporting mods required, a lot of fuel, a lot of air, a lot of engine. Um, so you really want to spec up what it is that you need to do and you know, how much boost, how much positive air that you need to provide the engine that you're running. Um, yeah, definitely, when you're talking on the smaller end, we wouldn't recommend using this on anything smaller than, say, a three-liter engine in a drag application. Um, with the three-liter, you might be inclined to go towards the 94, which is going to give you a little bit uh, faster response in regards to spool time um, and then obviously depending on what your setup's like, what fuel you're using, um, whether it's a manual or an automatic transmission with a trans brake and dump valves and things like that, um, you'll be able to spec up where it is that you need to go. These, all of these turbos are a journal bearing, so a 360 degree journal race bearing, uh, so it's just simply an oil feed. Uh, on here. We've gone with journal because the amount of oil flow um, that you can run through the journal core uh, means that you've got great lubrication. Uh, you've also got excellent cooling for that turbocharger. So uh, journal bearing is, there's always a bit of an argument that, you know, ball bearing is going to spool faster and that's true. Generally at this level with the capacity of the engine that you're going to be running on these turbos, that's not really a concern. Um, the way the oil flow works and the design of the bearing works as you get into very high, uh, high boost levels or high compressor wheel speed, the amount of oil flow that you've got here is actually gonna cushion and cradle the turbine shaft. So it's gonna float uh, in there. You won't have any restriction as far as boost levels are concerned. All of these turbochargers share a common turbine, which is a 102 millimeter exducer in the turbine. Uh, so you've got plenty of flow for large capacity. We would, we don't have any issues running all the way up to uh, say like a 10 litre or your common big block stroker engines. So like a, a 540 or a, you know, 572 or 632 even. Uh, we actually have uh, one of these big boys uh, attached to a Pontiac drag car over in WA, Western Australia. Uh, Kevin Bolton is running the 106, 102. Um, that's on a, you'll have to forgive me if this is wrong, but I believe it's a 540 cubic inch big block. Uh, as a single unit, uh, it's run 7.0 consistently on a 315 radial tire. 
Um, so really that car has, <laughs> it really shouldn't be running that fast. Um, these guys are only laying maybe 30 pounds into it at the big end of the track. Um, so there's a lot of potential there. Um, there's a couple of others running around on some smaller capacity things that we're gonna see results from really soon, which will be pretty exciting. Um, but to recap, power is the goal, um, capacity is there. So the 102 range or the big boy range is really where you need to be. So if we wanna get into a few more specifics uh, on the design of the turbo or the features of the turbochargers, you're talking about the front housing here. So on the compressor cover, you've got the outlet is V-banded, so you don't have to worry about any silicons popping off there. You're basically gonna V-band clamp that down um, and then your intake pipe, you obviously weld the other end of the flange on, it's clamped on, there's no slipping, there's no popping. Uh, that's gonna deal with any boost you can throw at it that this turbo will produce. The front of the compressor housing also has uh, the surge slots uh, in the side here, which is gonna make it much more efficient. You're not gonna get any compressor surge uh, with that design. So large RPM, um, very high compressor wheel speed is manageable. And you've also got, so that you can monitor that, the compressor wheel speed sensor port in the front here, which is just the same as the rest of the boosted range. That's a feature that we've included in everything. So when it comes to the rear of the turbo or the turbine housing, there's two options. We have the T6 housing, which is a 1.24 AR. And then there's also the dual V-band rear housing, which is much more compact. And that is a 1.22 AR or sizing. Why would you go V-band over a T6? Well, put simply, weight. Uh, and space. So the physical size that you can see uh, between the T6 housing and the dual V-band housing is considerable. You've got obviously a lot more options when it comes to positioning of V-band housing. So you can bring the turbo in a little bit closer or you don't have to worry about clearing, you know, cages and, you know, chassis components uh, in the front end of the car. And the V-band also has these little lugs that are positioned around the housing so that you can mount the turbine housing um, off your cage or your chassis. Um, so it takes the load off the manifold itself. So that's a great feature of V-Band. But the biggest thing when it comes to uh, the two different options is the weight difference. So as you can see, we've measured these. Um, the T6 is at 17 kilos by itself. And then when we go to the V-Band, there's a whopping drop of seven kilos or 7.4 kilos down to 9.7 kilos. So the weight saving by itself is a massive consideration when you're talking about such a large turbocharger. The complete unit, I believe, is 38 kilos with a T6 uh, rear on it. So to be able to get that under 30 in a race car, uh, get that weight off the nose if it's important, um, is, uh, is quite a bonus. So that's an option that you can buy the turbo with that housing on it, or you can buy it as a separate uh, upgrade. So if you've already got the T6 but you're changing up the setup, you're going to do a new manifold design, take a look at the dual V-band, save some weight and be able to position it exactly where you need to. Okay everyone, now you know all about the boosted big boy range of turbochargers. Get out there, get into the shed, make some room in your engine bay, whatever it is you need to do to get this thing on there, make some serious horsepower, run a new ET PB and you can check them out at your local distributor, quality retail outlet, or jump online at aeroflowperformance.com. And don't forget to send us an email on boosted at aeroflowperformance.com for all your technical and sales inquiries.